Okay, so we're doing section um, 12.5. It's lines and planes in space. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and uh, well, let's work on lines first. What I think I'm going to do is pick a point that's right above the x-axis. It doesn't need to be. Um, let me go to a gray line there. Okay, so I'm going to set my point right there. Right there. Call it R0. Okay, so that's going to be like a starting point, an initial point on a line. Okay, and so then the line is going to go through that point, but off in some other direction. <laughs> Try that again. So I'm going to make it a little too long and move it down a bit. And what I think I'll do is um, I'm going to do some more gray lines just to help you see the perspective here. So I think I'll come over like that and come over like this and just sort of hit it vertically. And then I'm going to have another vector that's going to be called um, uh, V. So let me do that real quick. Kind of fat this time. Oops, I don't want it to be dashed though. That's a little big. Okay, so that guy is V. And then I think I'll just put a point up here somewhere and call it R. So R uh, is going to represent every and any point on the line. Um, let's do it this way. R is going to be a point or a, a position vector, but also a point with coordinates X, Y, Z uh, represents every point on the line. R0 um, represents sort of an initial point, but it could be any fixed point. And unfortunately, you're going to hate me because I'm going to say oops. <laughs> Because I, what I wanted to do was give it coordinates as well. So R0, unfortunately, is going to be X0, Y0, Z0. Okay. And that's going to represent yes. fixed point. Is there a question? 
represents any fixed point on the line. And then there's that third vector, um, V, which is a direction vector. It stands for velocity because um, when we take the derivative of one of these functions, the derivative will be a velocity vector and it'll be a tangent to the, to the line, just like what you see. But V is a direction vector. So I'll give it coordinates as well. This is gonna be ABC. Um, is a direction vector. Okay, and see the idea is it should be sort of clear that you can scale that V vector to get up to R. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of draw a little barb going up to R. That didn't work, so I'm gonna try again. There we go. So, we should be able to multiply V by some scalar T. Um, um, so that um, if you do R naught plus V times T is equal to R where R is any point on the line. So as T varies, this equation represents all points on the line. Okay, um, so any questions there? It's pretty straightforward. If you just kind of look at the math, um, R plus V, sorry, R naught plus V doesn't make it up to R, but if you scale it, you know, and I can add another vector to this real skinny, um, just to make sure we're all seeing this. This um, vector I'm doing in orange right here. And let me do that better. I don't know, this is this probably looked terrible the way I'm drawing it. Come on. <laughs> okay, so um, that orange one, if you look at it, you can see that that, that R is equal to R naught plus some scalar multiple of V, okay? And so that's R, and R is just really to be thought of as a point on a line. It's a position vector, but I'd rather think of it as a point. Okay. And um, so then at this point, let's just go ahead and um, do a little algebra here. So R is equal to R0 plus TV. And R is XYZ 
equals um, R naught, which is X naught, Y naught, Z naught plus T times V, which is ABC. So I guess you could say that um, XYZ is equal to um, X naught plus AT. Um, y naught plus BT and Z naught plus CT. Okay. You could just call this whole thing R of T if you like, because it's now a function of time. It's called a vector valued function where it inputs a scalar and outputs a vector. The scalar, of course, is time. And so the idea is, is at any time you, you end up at some position on this line in space. Okay, it outputs a position vector. Uh, any questions? So this is called vector, um, this is called a vector function. That's yes, one sir. way. Yeah, the the second red line at the very uh, like toward the end where it says x uh, x zero y zero y z zero um, is that plus t? Uh, yeah, I apologize. Oh, that's um, fine, fine. Yeah, it's this guy, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. No, I I thought it looked bad. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't fix it then. Okay, so the first is a vector function. Um, then we could do a parametric form. There's three different ways to write this. So the parametric form is you would say, oh, X is X naught plus AT. Y is Y naught plus BT. And Z is Z naught plus CT. And you just let time vary. And that gives the X, Y, and Z coordinates of a point in space. And as time varies, that will trace out a line. Okay, any questions? Um, so the, I think the vector form is the most important one. The parametric form is fine. It's essentially the same thing. Um, there's also something called the symmetric form that nobody cares about, but it's in all the books. And in the symmetric form, um, you would solve each equation for T. And so they're all the same T. So like on, on the first one, T is equal to X minus X naught over A. That's the first one. And the second one, T is Y minus Y naught over B. And then on the third one, T is Z minus Z naught over C. And so the parrots and the symmetric form looks like this X minus X naught over A equals Y minus Y naught over B equals C, sorry, <laughs> Z minus Z naught over C. And so for every point X, Y, Z on this line, those three expressions are all the same number. And they are T. So, I never used it before. It's absolutely worthless as far as I'm concerned, but maybe I'm crazy. I don't know everything. So uh, I'll just make the note here that we won't use this much. Just, uh, you know, you might use it in the homework you know, in this section, and then don't be surprised if you never see it again. Okay. 
so an example, I think I'm sure I owe it to you. So um, this is usually how the problem comes at you. Um, so it would be um, give the uh, vector um, uh, equation well, how about this? Just give the equation of the line. Um, that contains the points. Um, two, negative three, four. And um, one, five, nine. Okay, so I'm gonna call this uh, as the initial point, we'll call this our R zero. And this other point I'm gonna call R one. Okay, and so, I mean, if you want, without any context, maybe we could draw a line, the line that contains these two points. Would it matter if we flipped it and we call two, negative three, four? Yeah. Um, or one? So, so you're saying, yeah, the, 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 I guess the question is, do you want one of them to be a starting point? Um, you'll see in a moment that if you reverse this, then the line, then in as time increases, you'll be going in the same, in, sorry, in the opposite direction on the same line. So the way you set this up um, just depends on what direction you want to go in. Okay, so R0 is denoted R0 because it's, it's at time zero. Okay. And you'll see that R1 is denoted R1 because that'll occur one second later at time one. Okay. 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 So if you want it to go in the opposite direction, then R0 should be the other. You see what I'm saying? So this, this, this will, I'll just go ahead and put this note. You'll see it when we go forward, but this is, this one will be at time zero. And then this one will be at time one, just for your information. And it's good to know because later on we'll be integrating, we'll be doing something called line integrals. Isn't that lovely sounding? And like if you're trying to compute um, like work as you move along the line in space, you have to do that with a line integral. And, um, and you'll need to put limits on the integral. So you go through all this trouble, you set up an integral um, and then the limits on the integral will be the limits on time. So if you do if you do this formulation of the line, time will always go from zero to one because you always they'll always say what's the work to move from here to here and give you the endpoints of the line. And so, but you have to give endpoints for the time interval. Anyway, so this would be my r zero, and this would be my r one. And I don't care about the geometry that much here. The point is, I need a direction vector. So what I would do then is um, just draw a direction vector in here. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, so that's gonna be my V. And can you see um, it, you know, I can reverse V, but do you remember that um, the difference between the two vectors, you do the second one minus the first one um, it's been a while since we talked about that. It was back when we first introduced subtraction of vectors. So um, uh, if we let V be R1 minus R0, you always do it in the opposite direction that you want to go in. Okay, so here you would subtract um, 159 minus the vector two, negative three, four. Um, so you'll get 
what, negative one, uh, five minus negative three is eight, and nine minus four is five. One, negative one, eight, five. And then um, the vector form for the equation of the line would just be like R of T equals, um, I think I said R zero plus VT. Like that. Okay, so um, the R zero was the two negative three four. And you, you don't have to use R zero, you could use R one, it would just be starting at a different location. Okay, so two negative three four um, plus V, which is the negative one eight five um, times T. And then maybe if you really want it to look like a vector in this vector function, you would do two minus T, uh, negative three plus eight T, and four plus five T. So that again is a vector function. It takes a scalar as an input and it outputs a point on the line. Um, and you can see it if you put zero for T here, you get two negative three four, which is the starting point. If you put in a one for the time, you would get two minus one, which is the one up here. Negative three plus eight times one, that's the five. And then four plus five times one, which is the nine. See, so at time one, you're at the other point. Okay, And it's not hard to prove why that is. Um, you, you can just kind of think about it in general if you want, but it always works that way. Okay, any questions? I, I didn't say which form of the line. I, I actually backed out on that. So um, the parametric form is um, x equals 2 minus t, um, y equals um, negative 3 plus 8t, and z is 4 plus 5t. OK. And then the symmetric form that I don't care about um, here, you'd solve each equation for t. So the first one, I think you'd get, ugh, um, when you get like a two minus X equals um, Y plus three over eight equals um, Z minus four over five. Just solving each of those for T and recognizing that they are therefore the same. Okay, any questions about that? <clears throat> So that's a line in space, super easy. There's not a clean way to represent a line in three dimensions. It just take, it takes more than one equation. I think that's the bottom line is, um, if you wanna work in three dimensions, you can't express a line with one equation. So this, this technically here is two equations, right? And these are sort of three equations, right? Which is the same as the vector form. It's really three equations. Okay, any questions? equations that are simultaneously true for each given point on the line. Um, 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 um. So um, from above, um, given two points, let's say R zero and R one, um, the V vector was R1 minus R0. Um, <clears throat> so 
um, R, I'll say so, R, which was, um, was it R naught plus TV? Like that, it's, um, it's R naught plus T times R1 minus R naught, like that. And um, they say this, that you could distribute it this way, R naught plus T R one minus T R zero. One more step. Um, so R is equal to um, one minus T times R naught plus T times R1. Okay, so notice if T is equal to zero, if T is zero, then this term vanishes and you just get R naught. See? And if T equals one, then this term vanishes and you just get R1. Okay, so that's why that works that way. So um, at uh, t equals zero, um, r is r naught. At uh, t equals one, r is r one. Okay. Okay, any questions? So this is a form given in the book. Uh, I, you don't need to remember that. I, my attitude is, is as long as you know that first one I gave, this one up here, <laughs> that's really the only one you really, to me, I, I, everything comes from that. So um, I, I don't think you should, get too wound up about all these different forms they give because it's almost too many different ways to do the same thing. Okay, so that's lines. Um, let's do planes. How are we doing? It's 815. Okay, let's get planes down anyway. Okay, so a plane is sort of rep easiest to represent by a parallelogram. So I'm going to draw myself a parallelogram up here. Okay, so what you're going to need is what we call a normal to the plane. So this is going to be a vector at some point down here. You're going to have a vector that's perpendicular to this plane. Okay. So this is N, which is a um, perpendicular, um, what's called a normal. Oops. Um, to the plane. Okay, and the vector and the coordinates are just going to be A, B, C, sort of like the direction vector for a line was A, B, C. Um, the direction of a plane is a normal. Which, what direction does a plane point? Well, as far as we're concerned, it points up. It point, the, the direction of a plane is perpendicular to the plane. Okay. And if you think about in physics, whenever you think about, um, you know, how a plane interacts with an object that might be sliding uh, down, um, you're not really interested in the vertical. You're interested in the normal of the plane when you try and figure out the friction that exists between an object that slides down a plane and the plane itself. You're interested in the normal. That's the direction of the plane. Okay. 
that's the one we work with most often. So I guess I could try and draw something here. I'm going to draw another vector in the plane. So down here in at this green point that I drew, I'm going to call that point R naught. That's going to be a point in the plane, a fixed point in the plane. And then I'm going to have another point over off in some other direction here. That's going to be just R here. Oops, not an R naught though. That's just R over there. Okay, so um, um, just to denote everything here, R um, represent is going to be X Y Z again. Okay, and again, it represents any point in the plane. Okay. R not, I maybe maybe I shouldn't say any. Let's just say, well, every. <laughs> I don't know. Any's fine. <laughs> I don't know what the difference is. Okay, so then R not is a fixed point in the plane. Okay, so that's going to be x not y not z not. You're going to need to know a point in a plane to define the plane. So this is uh, represents a fixed point in the plane. Okay. Okay, and then um, in which has coordinates A, B, C, represents a normal to the plane. Okay, so a normal to the plane means it's perpendicular to the plane. And that's the closest you can get to a direction vector for a plane. And by the way, it can point up or down. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you give an upward normal or a downward normal, and it doesn't matter how long the normal is. And now the rest of this is pretty straightforward. Note um, that um, the vector um, R not R, which is just R minus R not, is perpendicular to n for every point in the plane. Now the point is going to be r in the plane. OK, so I should be able to take a dot product. Um, if I do r minus r naught, and dot that with n, what should I get? Zero. zero. Mm -hmm. This is equal to zero for all points in the plane. And so that's the equation of the plane. Okay, so this is where you just sit back and go, okay, um, what's r minus r not? Well, let's see, um, r, is x 
y z minus r naught, that's x naught, y naught, z naught. Okay, that started with n, which is abc. That is, remember dot product is scalar. So this has to come out zero because we're forcing these to be perpendicular. And that forces the points x, y, z to be in the plane. Okay, this equation will only be true for equations, sorry, for points in the plane. So just a couple more steps here. We'll do the subtraction first, x minus x naught, comma y minus y naught, comma z minus z naught, that vector dotted with abc has to be zero. And so we would do the dot product and say a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught is equal to zero. And that's the equation of a plane. Um, containing the point x naught, y naught, z naught, um, and normal to, uh, let's just say with normal. Um, a in, which is ABC. Okay, so planes are actually more simple than lines in terms of their equations. So you can express a, an, um, an equation with a simple equation. <laughs> you can express a plane with this simple equation, but lines take more than one equation. Don't know why this just happened. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> probably we should do an example, 825. I think that's all we'll get in today, the example. So let's see here. Um, example, um, let's find um, the plane, the equation. Of the plane containing the points um, Amazingly, I don't have this as an example. I feel like I've got to be missing something. That's crazy. Oh, here we go. Okay, so the, the points are, um, and I'll give them names. Um, so let's do a P of um, 1, negative 2, 4. Um, Q of 3, 1, 5 and a point um, R whose coordinates are negative two, six, one. Okay, no normal. <laughs> Any ideas? I, I got three points, which is more than I need. I only need one, um, but I know, three, I know three points to find a plane. So you're thinking a cross product to get a normal? Okay, yeah. so, so <laughs> I <laughs> you said that's funny the way you said that. Okay, so I've got a P, right? I've got a Q, and I've got an 
R like that. And so the cross product of what? Uh, you would make a vector like PR and PQ. Good. Very nice. Good work. So this would be like a PQ here. There and a PR there. Okay, and then the normal will be perpendicular to both of these. So the normal will come up like this. So our normal, you could do like PQ cross PR, right? Ugh. What a horrible thing. But in, in the end, um, you'll have perpendiculars like this. I don't think I drew that very well, but hopefully you see what I mean. So let's go with this. Uh, PQ um, is Q minus P. Remember, always the end minus the start. Okay. So this would be 3, 1, 5 minus um, 1, negative 2, 4. So three minus one plus two, um, one minus negative two is three, and five minus four is one, two, three, one. And then PR is R minus P, second minus first. Questions? All right, so R is the negative two, six, one. Minus P, which is the one, negative two, four. Like that. So um, negative two minus one is negative three. Um, six minus negative two, you add to get eight. Oops. <laughs> Six minus negative two is eight, and then one minus four is negative three again. So I got negative three, eight, negative three. And then you guys okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Almost done. Five minutes. So our normal, and this this will not finish this section, by the way. So our normal is again PQ um, cross PR. Okay, so we do our IJK up on top. Like that. So the PQ is two, three, one. And the PR negative three, eight, negative three. And so um, again, I always write I hat times a minor minus j hat times a minor plus k hat times a minor. I know some of you guys have different ways of doing um, three by three determinants, that's fine. Um, my way generalizes to higher dimensional determinants, so that's why I do it this way. Anyway, so for the um, i hat part, I block out the row and column for i hat and I get three, one, eight, negative three. For the j hat, um, we block out the, the uh, j hat column and we get two, one, negative three, negative three. And then finally for the k hat, we block out the k hat column and we get two, three, negative three, eight. Like that. Okay, any questions about the determinant? I wonder if we can do this in our heads. So I think I see negative nine minus eight. Is that negative 17 I? Yep. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, and then negative six minus negative three is negative six plus three. 
which is negative three, and there's another minus sign, so it would be plus three j. Yeah. Lots of minus signs, gotta watch them. And everybody group screws that up now and then, so don't feel bad if you do, except for if it's on a test, then you can feel bad. And now two times eight is 16 minus negative three times three. So it's 16 minus negative nine, which is 16 plus nine, which is 25. So is that 25K? Yeah. Cool. And of course, I would rather write this as negative six, sorry, negative 17, three, 25. Um, that's my ABC vector. Okay. And so that's the hard part. We could make P our um, X not Y not, that could be our R zero vector. So this could be the, um, you know, X not Y not Z not. So um, that's the, uh, it doesn't matter which point you use, you can use any of the points. And when you simplify, it'll be the same equation. Anyway, one, negative two, four. Okay. And then finally, it's all wrapped up when you give the equation. Here's the plane. Okay. It's A times X minus X naught plus B times Y minus Y naught plus C times Z minus Z naught. Uh, that's a dot product. And those have to be perpendicular. So it's equal to zero. Okay, and everything's sort of staring us in the face now. It's negative 17 times X minus one. Um, plus three times Y minus negative two, so that would be y plus two, um, plus c, so c was 25, so plus 25 times z minus z naught, oh boy, minus four equals zero. This can be a bit of a mess. Um, we usually, um, would want the constants on the other side. So, so really it's negative 17 X plus three Y um, plus 25 Z um, equals some monstrosity. So that's gonna be 17 plus um, six is 23 minus 100 is negative 77. So you move it over to the other side and I think you get a positive 77. Is that right, you guys? I know you guys are better at, this, at that kind of, I'm not very good at numbers. I just assume you guys are on top of that part. Yep, that's what I got. Fantastic. Okay, so um, this is the simplest form for the equation of the plane. But what I want you to note with the, with the variables on one side, you can still see the normal vector. And that's always true for a, a plane, that if you put the variables on, on one side, the x, y, and z coefficients make the normal. Okay, so the variables on one side, um, the x, y, z coefficients um, um, give the normal vector. And you'll need that sometimes, okay? Um, so for instance, later on, before, you know, we're not done with this lesson, but they'll give you the equation of, the, of a plane, and then they'll give you a point that's not on the plane, and they'll say, how far is the point from the plane? And you can't do that computation without knowing the normal vector for the plane. But you can see it, it's, it's negative 17, 3, 25, right? So here, the normal, it, you, you can reconstruct it from the equation of the plane is my point, okay? Does that make sense, you guys? And then this gets plugged in to the distance formula to find how far um, the points are, uh, any point is from the plane, not like you'd wanna know that, but 
Um, there are homework problems on it. Anyway, this is not done. Um, so we'll, we'll finish this on Monday. So um, this was this 12.5? Yeah, so so just get your 12.4 homework done and I'll take questions on that Monday. And Okay, so I just want to continue with planes for a little bit. Um, and um, just some informal um, tips on planes. Okay, first one is always show up an hour early. It's just a joke. That's just a joke. Okay, the second one is um, if I ask you to graph um, this one, uh, 3x plus 2y plus 4z equals 12. Um, it's easiest if you just find the x, y, and z intercepts. So um, each intercept is found by setting the other two variables to zero. So um, let me capitalize that. Okay, so um, for the x-intercept, you make y and z zero. So what's that? You just get three x is 12, right? So x is four. You guys follow this? Yeah. OK, cool. And so the y-intercept, what's that? It'd be 12 over 2, so 6. Six, good. Yeah, and then the z-intercept is three right and then if i had if someone insisted that i graph this um it's so hard right but um sometimes you need to so this is just one thing i thought you should keep it that didn't look great this is just one thing i think maybe you could keep in mind that if you graph those intercepts And then um, sometimes I'll just take a ruler and just draw lines through all three points from for, through every pair of points here. So um, I'm going to do that the best way I can, I'm going to switch colors actually. So best way I can do that um, on an iPad is to draw like that and then move it a little bit. So you'll see me shifting these around a little bit as I go through this. Okay, and then Like that, I guess. And one more. Okay. And uh, sort of like that. And maybe that's enough. I don't know. Sometimes I've been known to add to just make a parallel lines. So that's probably okay. I think I can see the plane. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, if I wanted a parallelogram, I'd probably just do some parallel lines here. And um, maybe like this. So I don't know if that makes sense there. And I, I, this may be making it worse. So you guys can tell me. Uh, if you think, uh, you know what, you should have stopped a while ago. Um, and, and I'll take that as constructive criticism. Okay, so this is just me doing my best to take, you know, they give me an equation, they tell me to graph the stupid thing. And planes are just hard to graph because it's hard to graph flat stuff, you know what I mean? So that's one way to do it. Okay, any questions? So just basically trying to 
you know, draw parallel lines as you make planes like that usually gives people a sense of what it looks like. Okay, any questions? And, and I don't know, you know, that, that diagonal line may be unnecessary at this point. I don't know, does it convey it well without the diagonal? You can, you can decide. Okay, so um, that's one thing. Any questions about that? Um, another thing is if you know the intercepts of a plane, it's really easy to do the equation of, if you want to remember this. And you can check it. It's super easy. So um, another thing, we'll call this a pro tip, okay? Pro tip from pro, okay? If you know the intercepts, Um, the equation is easy. Let's say um, x equals a, y equals b, and z equals c. Um, the equation of the plane. You'll see me do this sometimes when, uh, especially in homework questions. You'll see me just pull the plane, the equation of the plane out of thin air. And it's just because I know this little pro tip. You just divide each variable by its intercept. Now, clearly, I don't know if it's clear to you. This is, to me, clearly the equation of a plane because it's linear and it contains all three variables. It's just a linear equation in X, Y, and Z, and that is always a plane. And if you look at it by making Y and Z zero, I hope you can see it's X over A is one, which means the X intercept is A, and same thing with the Y and Z intercepts being B and C respectively. Okay, um, if you want to do a graph of that, it's the same as the one above but I'm changing the intercepts to A, B, and C. So um, that's, that's a good Give the equation of a plane. You don't have to find the normal vector. You can see the normal vector though. So the normal vector would be what? Remember the coefficients of x, y, and z after you've moved them all to the side. So the normal vector here would be one over a, one over b, one over c. You have to move it, you have to move x and z to one side, and the coefficients um, become a normal vector. And, and the normal vectors are not unique, so there's a lot of different forms for writing the normal vector. Okay? But that's the simplest form. All right. Ooh, thanks, to Alberta. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so... Another, another um, side note, I guess, um, is it talks about the angle between planes. Um, so this would be the same as the angle between what? And I don't even know how to, you know, it's drawing and <laughs> so this is not, gonna, this would not be easy to draw. So if somebody made me draw this, I might do parallel, mm, I wonder if I could do parallelograms here. That's not good. It's horrible.
So when I say the angle between two planes, I mean, you can see sort of what I'm describing here, this right here. Uh, assuming they intersect, if they don't intersect, then the angle between them is zero, right? They're parallel. Uh, but if the angles, if the planes do intersect, um, then we would define the angle between the planes maybe like that, but it's easier if, if you just talk about the angle between the normals. Remember, the plane's direction is its normal. Okay, so if you want to find the angle between two planes, you may as well just find the angle between the two normals. So um, let's just say this is the same. as um, the angle between the normal vectors, let's say between the normals of those planes. Okay, any questions about that? Questions? Uh, no. Okay, cool. Let's do a quick example here. Um, so um, let's say um, 2x plus 5y minus 3z equals 9. And let's have um, 4x minus y plus 2z equals 1. Okay. So the normals are, you could have like an N1 for the first normal and it would be two, five, negative three. Remember the variables have to be on one side to do this. And you just give the coefficients in the, in the proper order. Two, five, negative three. And then the other normal is in two, which is four, negative one and two, okay? And maybe the, the magnitude. So the magnitude of N1 would be, let's see, 25, 29, and nine, I think it's that square root of 38. I'll double check here, four and 25 is 29 and nine is 38. Okay, and then the, the magnitude of N2 um, is, 16, 17, 20 square to 21. Okay. And then while we're at it, let's do N1 um, dot N2. So um, that'll be eight minus five minus six. So that's negative three. Okay, so this looks like, this comes out negative. So the angle is gonna be obtuse between them. And you know that um, N1 dot N2 is equal to the magnitude of N1 times the magnitude of N2 times the cosine of the angle that separates them. So um, got all these um, N1 dot N2. So that's uh, negative three equals the square root of 38 times the square root of 21 times the cosine of the angle between the two planes. Okay, so um, theta would be cos inverse of negative three over the square root of 38 square root of 21. So that's the angle between the planes and I won't, I won't bore you with figuring out what that is in degrees. So, Anybody have any questions about that? This, that's, that should be pretty straightforward. Would we be able to use the cross product one as well to get the same answer? So like N1 cross with N2 is equal to the magnitude of both of them yeah. sine theta? Yeah, I, you know, you're going to use the sine inverse, right? And, yeah, and we then, should get the same answer. Yeah, except for, you know, cos inverse is just a cooler trig function because it returns obtuse angles and acute angles. 
sine inverse is less friendly because it, it outputs between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. So bottom line is sine inverse never, so it never, it never gives up two angles. So you'll have to think, what you'll end up doing is you'll take the sine inverse, it'll come out negative, and then you're going to go, oh, I need to add pi to this to get my obtuse angle. Mm, you, follow, you follow? Yeah. And, and cross products are way harder to compute than dot products. That's true. Okay. Yeah. It could be done. So um, a couple other ideas before we move on. Um, Okay, so next is the distance from a point to a line. We could have done this a, a while ago, I guess, but we only covered lines in space in this section. Um, but the, the formula, is, you know, we're just doing trig in space, which is dot products and cross products. So distance from a point to a line in space. And if you think about it, when I say the distance from a point to a line, you've got to be talking about a perpendicular distance. So if you're talking about perpendicular distances, if I feel like, okay, we're going to either do a sine or a cosine of a triangle. And um, if, it, if I need a sine, I'll probably want a, um, a cross product. And if I need a cosine, I'll probably want a dot product because it's the cross and dot products that do our trig for us in space. Okay. So let me give you a kind of a quick diagram here. So we'll just do a line. Duh. We'll call it L. And don't forget lines have direction vectors and points on them. So you're going to need a point. Any point, call it P. Okay, and then a direction vector. Do we want to use a direction vector? Um, so yeah, I guess <laughs> um, we'll call this point up here Q, like that. Actually, uh, let me switch those just because I'm, tr I'm trying to match the notation in my notes. So I'm going to call the first one Q and the second one P. I don't know that that's important, but of course, um, I'll probably want to think about this vector here. Okay. And then I'll need a direction vector. So um, I'll just go ahead and draw one on L. Maybe I'll do that in blue. Didn't work. I'm going to try it with a thicker pencil. There we go. So this that guy is just V, which is a direction vector. OK. And then, of course, we have an angle that separates these theta. Okay, and the, what the distance I want is sort of perpendicular here. So um, if I, that P kind of ended up off my line. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna move it onto the line here. here. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw my uh, perpendicular here. That is gonna be the distance we're trying to determine like this. I guess that's pretty good. Like that. And um, if you want, we can identify this vector here as um, <laughs> um, this would be the magnitude of PQ, I guess, like that. And then um, I feel like we need to take, if we want this distance here, um, do we want a sine or a cosine? Which distance? 
uh, the dotted line there. We're trying to do the distance from the point to the line. That'd be a sign. Okay, so we need to do the magnitude of PQ. I'm going to do that in a different color. That's not good. So we'll just zoom back. So this would be the magnitude of PQ sine theta, right? And then, um, so the, the obvious cross product, so keep, keep in mind here that V is a direction vector. So V here is a direction vector. We get that from the line. Um, and so if we do, um, if we do the magnitude of PQ cross V, this should do our trig for us, right? Because the cross product does it does the sine. So keep in mind that this would be the magnitude of PQ times the magnitude of V times the sine of theta. So um, our uh, our distance. Um, is equal to um, magnitude of PQ sine theta, which is the magnitude, right, of PQ cross V over what? The magnitude of V. And so you see how I just, uh, what I'm saying is again, repeatedly, I'm saying we're doing trig without trig, right? <laughs> Cross product does it for you. Okay. So I probably should demonstrate that. Um, and the trick is you, you have to get a point on the line. Right, and you also need a direction vector, but those are hidden in the equation of the line. So, you know, if you remember the equation of a line, I wrote R uh, as a position vector for points on the line. R of T, I think we made it um, um, A T plus X naught, um, B T plus Y naught, and C T plus Z naught. Okay, this is from the beginning of this lecture that we were doing last time. Okay, so the point um, is right now going to be the Q, okay, that's on in the diagram. So this would just be the X naught, Y naught, Z naught. So the point Q, you can get um, oops, Z naught from the equation of the line itself. And then the direction vector is also embedded in the equation. So V is the vector of coefficients, um, ABC. Like that. And point P will be given. In a problem on this. Okay, now I'm just going to pause for a second. Does anybody have any questions about this? So maybe let's do a problem real quick. So I'm going to shrink that down a bit, squeeze it in. Okay, so let's say the line is R of T. Um, equals, let's just do 2 plus 3t, um, t minus 1, and negative t plus 2, no, nah, plus uh, 1. Okay, like that. So um, my point um, on the line, q, is which? It'd be two, negative one, 
uh, one or negative one? Uh, two, negative one, one. Okay. okay, here's the point on the line. That's when T is zero, by the way. Okay, and then V is our direction vector. That points parallel to the line. What's that? Two. I don't know, coefficients. Three, one, negative one. Okay, so now you have a direction vector. Okay, so let's say I say find the distance. Um, from, and I'll just come up with P. And with my luck, it'll be on the line. I got to make sure it's not on the line. Okay, so let's say uh, six, one, five. Okay, I'm gonna make sure. So let's see if T is, yeah, that's not gonna work. So we're good. Yeah, um, to this line. <laughs> I was, I'm making this up in, out of thin air. I wasn't planning on doing this, but uh, I needed to make sure that point was not on the line. Okay, so first we do PQ. I mean, basically you've, you're almost there with the with the setup we've got. So um, PQ. How do you do PQ um, in in terms of the vector, the position vectors we've got here? Is it P minus Q? Yeah. 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 No. Oh, okay. It'd be from the line to the point off the line, correct? So it'd be from Q to P. I'm just trying to connect P to Q as P. Uh, well, I wrote PQ, but that's actually Q. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, this is QP. It doesn't make any difference, but what I've drawn here is QP. So I, I apologize for the mistake. There it is. Okay, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna change this down here to QP. It doesn't matter because in the end you're taking the magnitude, so you can reverse the direction of this, and it'll still um, it'll, the cross product. So it'll change the sign of the cross product, but the magnitude will be the same. So I don't know if you follow that, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Anyway, what's the formula for QP? <laughs> Is it Q minus P? P minus Q. Ah, it's P minus Q. You have to change the order here. Okay, so here um, we got it. It's 615 minus Q, which was 2, negative 1, 1. So that's easy. So we're going to get um, 4. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2, right? 4, 4, 2, 4. Okay, and then we have to do PQ cross V. All right, so here goes PQ cross V. This is going to do the trigonometry for us. This is the part that takes the sine of our angle, right? Which we don't know the angle, right? but it's still gonna do it. So we'll put our um, PQ is uh, 424. And V is three, one, negative one. Like that. So remember we do I hat, and then we'll do a determinant there. Well, I'll go ahead and just as a review, I'll go ahead and write the minors down. So I hat two by two minor minus J hat two by two minor plus k hat and a two by two minor. Okay, so for i hat, just as a reminder, you cross out the row and column for i hat and the minor is there, two, four, one, negative one. For j hat, 
And again, I know there's more than one way to do this, but this is the one that generalizes. Four, four, three, negative one. Covering up the column for J hat. And now for K hat, you cover up its column and four, two, three, one. Okay, and then as a reminder, how you do a two by two, if it's A, B, C, D, um, you go diagonally downhill first, then uphill, A, D minus B, C, like that. That's the two by two minor. So um, here, um, I think I can squeeze this in. I've got an I hat and it's gonna be negative two minus four, downhill then uphill, minus J hat, here, we're going to have negative 4 minus 12. And then plus k hat. And here, again, downhill, then uphill. 4 minus uh, 6. Okay, so there's a lot of negativity here. So I'm going to write this in IJK form now. Or sorry, in the component form now. So it's going to be negative 6, comma. Uh, negative 4 minus 2, negative 16, make it positive. So positive 16 comma, four minus six is negative two. Okay, so that's my um, normal, I guess it's perpendicular to these two vectors, but I don't care about that. What I care about is the magnitude, which is what gives the sign of the angle, okay? Um, just to, it's, um, I'm going to do a trick here. So if I do the magnitude of P, I, I just want you guys to see the kind of things you can do with this. If I do the magnitude of PQ cross V, um, I'm going to go ahead and put this here, magnitude with a negative six. Uh oh, got to put a vector symbol. Sorry. Um, so negative six, 16, two. Oh, gosh, dang. <laughs> I get it, 16, uh, negative two, like that. Uh, and um, so there's, sometimes there's a big number you can factor out of these. And when there are big numbers that factor out, you should factor out, but magnitude will make, will take absolute value to on scalars. So the essential idea is you can bring out a negative two, but it comes out in absolute values, okay? It could be positive two as well, but I'm just showing you what you can do. So if I factor out a negative two, this becomes a three, a negative eight, and a positive one, okay? So I just, this is important because you end up with vectors that get really big in the next chapter with nasty stuff on the inside. And the point is, if you can factor it, do, but make sure you're taking the absolute value if it's a negative scalar coming out. Okay? So that just becomes a two out front. So this is just a two, and then you have the square root. Okay? So there's the three square plus the negative eight square. Oop, negative. Not that the negative matters. And then plus one square. So that's gonna be two times the square root of what's that? 64 and nine is 73 plus one is 74. So is that square root of 74? Yes. And I don't know if that simplifies. Uh, square root of, this says two times 37, which is a mess. So we're not gonna do anything to simplify that. 8.6. Oh, I don't want to know that. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then um, um, we need to do the distance, which is that over the magnitude of V. So magnitude of V we have to do. Okay, so that's just the square root. Oh, well, that's, I'll put it in. So it's the magnitude of um, three, one, negative one. Like that. So that's the square root of three squared plus one squared plus negative one squared. And I think it's the square root of 11, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, the distance um, from, I don't know if you guys are hearing all these bells. <laughs> uh, my 
brother is texting me. He doesn't know I work late. He should. All right, so I'm trying to do the distance from P to L. Um, this is magnitude of PQ cross V over the magnitude of V. And so that's 2 root 74 over the square root of 11. And I'm only going to do this because I feel ashamed if I don't. So it's 2 root 11 root 74 over 11. Okay. And then I don't want to, I don't want to do any more to that. And I don't want to. I don't want to know what it is. <laughs> I don't care. Isn't that lovely? So, I, do I want you to memorize the formula that we came up with? I think I'm sure I did it differently than the book. This thing up here. Uh, do I want you to memorize that? No, I, I look, you guys, I don't have that memorized. I just know that if I need a sine, I do a cross product. And if I need a cosine, I do a dot product. That's much more useful than memorizing a formula that you'll probably never use again. You know what I mean? But, but you know, for the exam, I guess it's useful to memorize formulas, right? But then after the exam, that's it. And so to me, the much more important idea is just that you're remembering cross products for sines, dot products for cosines. That's how we do trig. And this is just a trig problem. It's just a triangle. Okay. Any questions about that? And we're going to take our break in a minute. But before we do, um, I think... I want to do the distance from a point to a plane. And I don't think I'll do an example of that. <laughs> so I'm going to do uh, same sort of development distance from a point to a plane. Okay, and so the difference here is um, let's see what I can do here. I don't let's look at our angles real quick here. So um, I'm gonna make a plane real quick. Okay, so there's my plane, and I'm going to set a point here and call it R0. Like that. And then what we have in planes are normal vectors. So let's come up with a normal vector to the plane. A little different from a line. I'm trying to make that look perpendicular, I don't know. Okay, so um, that's going to be my normal, like that. And we always, for a plane, we always call the normal ABC. Um, I'll say that's N, which is ABC. And just as a reminder, the equation of a plane is a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught um, equals zero. My zero. 
k equals zero. So the normal is just that ABC. It's easy to spot in the equation coefficients of x, y, and z. Okay, and then my my point in the plane is my r naught. And of course, that's the x naught, y naught, z naught. Okay, like that. Now, um, I want to go ahead and do like a dotted line coming off of that normal vector, and it's going to continue rising until it gets to this point P, which I have up a little higher. So I'm going to do that in a dashed line, and at the top, we'll set down point P. Thank you. Okay. And um, I'm going to draw another line. To, there's a sort of a, a triangle here as well. Um, so and we're just doing trig on a triangle again. So I'll go ahead and draw the triangle. And again, it's a right triangle. So maybe I'll get rid of that little red thing that I drew. And do a little right thing there. And actually, I'm starting to redirect, reject what I just did. I, I, I feel regret. I wanted that to be a solid line. Which one? The hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm just changing that real quick. Okay, so, and then what I really want to do is make go ahead and make this another vector here. So uh, once again, I am doing a vector here. And this thing is called PR, right? Like that. PR, sorry, PR zero. Like that. And if you don't want to talk sines and cosines, then you could think of this as just being the comp. We, we want to just cast a shadow of that vector down onto N. Okay, so um, this distance, let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to consolidate a little bit and just say the distance that we want is, oh, what I do? Come back. Lordy, lordy, where'd it go? Sorry about that, you guys. Oh, I don't know what happened. That's so strange. Only a little bit was lost. Okay, so the distance I want is this one right here. Okay, so that's my distance. And then all you have to do is just kind of recognize um, that if you take the shadow of PR zero onto N, that's it. Okay, so that would be the comp. I don't want to. I don't want a vector. I want the scalar. Remember, comp gives the scalar. Okay, so I want the n component of PR naught. So I'm going to put a little subscript to say I want the n component, meaning the part of PR naught that points in the n direction. Okay. Now there is trig in that, but I'm sort of hiding the trig in the comp command. And comp contains a dot product, you may remember. So we'll bring that back in a sec. So um, the distance here, let me go to a different color. Okay, so the distance 
is just comp onto n. That is the n component of PR naught. That is the part of P, the um, component of the vector PR naught the points in the n direction. Okay, and then we just have to remember what the formula is. It's n dot PR naught. Oops. Over the magnitude of n. Okay, so that's all you have to do. Um, and if you want, you can remember that PR naught. It should really be R naught P. Yeah. Because it goes from R naught to P. So I apologize for that. You can leave it or not. It technically goes from R naught to P. So here I am apologizing again. So it goes R naught P. And I'm going to fix that in the other locations as well. Back it up and almost done. So um, you could write this as n dotted with p minus r naught because that's the vector that can, connects r naught to p and then divide that by the magnitude of n. And that is very similar to the last one, but with a dot product because. Um, the, uh, this one, um, the angle we're looking at is this angle here. If that's, you can think of that as the theta. And what we need is the um, side adjacent to theta. So that's a cosine. And so um, when you need a cosine, then you're doing the dot product. Okay, so the, the cosine is hidden here in the side of the dot product. And that's what's giving us the side we need. Okay, any questions about this? I'm not going to do an example of this one, um, but you can expect to see it in the homework, and I will be happy to take homework questions on it if they arise. But go ahead and give it a try, okay, and then let me know if it's an issue. Um, does anybody have any questions about this bit, the last thing we're talking about here? Okay. Okay. 